السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ رمضان مبارک ٹو یو آل سو اٹس اے پلیشر فار می دیٹ آئی فیل آنر ٹو بی پارٹ آف دا لائف سیشن آف یور ان دس گروپ اینڈ فرسٹ آف آل آئی وڈ لائک ٹو تھینک دی ایڈمنس فار گیونگ می این اپرچونیٹی ٹو شیئر دا انفارمیشن دیٹ آئی ہیو ود یو آل I'm Zehra Batul, Amani Bird, Childbirth Educator and Doula in Training. So, if you uh, remember that last week we had a poll discussion regarding the topics that you all would want to hear. So, the first four that were, uh, that won the majority of the votes were Introduction to Amani Bird, um, Supporting Women During Labor or Birth, husband's role in labor or birth and last one was question and answer session life so i thought i would proceed with the same so before we begin i would like to share with you all the verse from the quran surah al-shura where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something which is um which is a great reality and most of us forget and especially when it comes to pregnancy and mothering and all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth he creates what he wills he gives to whom he wills female and he gives to whom he wills male or he makes them both male and female and he renders whom he wills barren indeed he is knowing and competent now there are two objectives of me sharing this uh, these two verses with you the first one is to remind you and me that everything is in control of our creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only this but not a leaf falls that allah knows about it so when it comes to children and child rearing and everything the way our women are pressurized especially in our society i want you to know that whatever happens happens by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you are someone who are struggling to have a child or to have a male child or to have a female child or you are someone who has suffered loss then know that all of this is allah's plan for you yes but what you can do is prepare for it and try to educate yourself for the responsibility that is on the way now the second objective of sharing these two verses is that this is the fundamental principle on which a money birth childbirth education program is based upon so now let's go ahead and see what a money birth is actually all about a money birth is a scientifically based childbirth education program where the curriculum it supports expectant families and we prepare the parents expecting mothers and whoever is interested mentally physically and emotionally for the birth and it is based on the Amani birth book. Now this curriculum is designed by Aisha Hajar about whom we will know in a couple of minutes. Now these were, this curriculum is designed in a way that they have their own workbooks in different languages, starting from Indonesia and Saudi Arabia, which is Arabic and then in, in English. The work in Urdu is being done still to translate the material. Now the foundation of this program is uh, are the core values of uh, the of our religion that is Islam wherein we are we teach mothers to trust Allah first and then do the homework which they are supposed to and one of the most important verses that we focus on is that where Maryam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he called out to her he said crave not the sustainer has provided a river 
running beneath you and shake the trunk of the palm tree towards you. It will drop fresh ripe dates upon you. Eat, drink, and let you be glad and let you see the glad tidings. A many bird is a childbirth education program as well as doula certification program wherein they certify the childbirth educators and doulas as birth professionals in the field of natural birth. Our primary goal is to teach trust in Allah first and foremost and that birth is a form of worship. Now every act if you have sincere intention you must know that and you do it uh, in uh, according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then it is a form of worship. Now, we do not provide medical advice or services and recommend that all expected parents seek out proper attendance for their birth. Now, I want to uh, tell you about the concept of the natural birth. Over here in our program, we teach the Amani philosophy of natural birth. Natural birth, the definition in of, of itself is debatable. There are two models of care. One is midwifery model of care and the other one is medical model of care. Most of you or most of the women around are aware about the medical model of care. Midwifery model of care revolves around usually the natural birth concepts. Now over here, AMANI stands for Assisting Mothers for Active, Natural and Instinctive Birth. It is a philosophy wherein a mother is the center of event. Now moving on, uh, first I will give a short introduction about myself and then the founder of this program and then we will see the principles on which this education program is based upon. My name is Zahra Batul and I am an Indian citizen by passport. So I was born in Hyderabad and when I was eight months old, I was my mother, my parents, they moved to Saudi Arabia and then I was brought up here in Jeddah and Riyadh and then I graduated from um, India, that is Hyderabad and I'm an information technology engineering graduate. Right now, I'm mother of two beautiful daughters and a wife to a great husband, alhamdulillah. So my journey into childbirth began when I had my first daughter through C-section surgery, which I felt was completely unnecessary. And, you know, I was basically bullied and manipulated into it. And the second birth, which was a successful VBAC, that is a vaginal birth after cesarean, nothing but a normal birth of the surgery which doctors rarely support these days so the second birth was a very life-changing event wherein i had gone uh, you know I'd done a lot of preparation and i had since i had felt very guilty in my first birth because i knew that i didn't have enough knowledge i don't i didn't know where to start from all i knew was that i could have read more or I have been informed more so that my baby wouldn't have suffered much. So my second birth, I did a lot of hard work. I enrolled myself into childbirth education classes by Amani birth and was in touch with great doulas from all around the world. And alhamdulillah, I left for the hospital at the last pushing stage and then my baby was out in 15 minutes with an intact perineum. So basically I didn't have any stitch, alhamdulillah. So this was all after a lot of preparation and hard work from this program. After that, after this experience, I felt very empowered and I thought that every woman, especially the women in our society and the women of our Muslim Ummah should know how to birth normally and they should know how to birth by themselves rather than being delivered and being at the mercy of the medical care and the medical staff. They should know how to stand for themselves. They should know what is right and what is wrong. And they should be in a position to have an informed decision. That is something you know that what are the consequences of it. And based upon that, you do the decision making. So, and hence, I thought I should enroll myself and start 
awareness and you know um, imparting knowledge about it so here i am right now i've already attended 24 uh, 21 hours training program and i'm on my way to certification where i'll have to have a few clients and give final exam and then i'll be certified inshallah so now coming to the founder of this program her name is aisha she's an american mother of eight children, mashallah, and she's married to Muhammad Al Hajar from Saudi Arabia. And she discovered the passionate world of natural birthing at the age of 17. At 26, she gave birth to her first baby naturally without any pain medications and episiotomy, that is the fact which they do routinely. And by the way, it is not recommended by WHO. So there are most of the things that we don't know and we are, you know, just done as an experiment. So then later on, she had three more children after, before converting to Islam and after moving to Egypt. She had her sixth baby when she discovered that the birthing culture in Egypt was also very disturbing. And then she moved to Saudi Arabia and then she had her seventh baby, Alhamdulillah, and she named her Amani. So this, this childbirth education program is after her name, after her, after her baby. And then during her eighth pregnancy, she was a certified Bradley Method teacher. You must all be aware about, or if you are not, I would tell you, there are a lot of childbirth education programs in the West. So if you go and Google, you'll get Lamaze, you'll get Bradley, a lot of it. So money birth is a first of its kind because it focuses on Islamic values. But that doesn't mean that it is not for anyone who's not a Muslim. It is open to all, but especially designed for women who know what Islam is and should be doing what, you know, they have to. And most of us don't unfortunately so then she also became a breastfeeding counselor through the world health organization and uh, unicef program and then later on she's now a certified professional midwife in usa saudi arabia and egypt and she is also the founding uh, sorry the represent the gcc representative for international mother baby childbirth initiative she has also been author and done a lot of freelance work and contributed to the motherhood co column on Saudi life and parenting column and she has her own blog and also contributed freelance features to Arab news so this is all about her now moving forward I would like to tell you in brief what Amani philosophy is all about. So, unlike other, um, most of the childbirth education programs or the medical model of care, Amani revolves around, um, by the way, Amani means wishes in Arabic. So, it uh, this concept of natural birth revolves around the mother like it is about you and where the mother is prepared educated supported and encouraged to birth without the interference of medicines or unnecessary medical procedures or other unnatural influences and it focuses more on how what happens to the mother's body and how the baby exits rather than you know pushing the mother and treating her as a patient as most of the hospitals do and it recognizes birth as a natural physiological normal physiological process unfortunately for most of the doctors and even hospital procedures who do not follow the natural birth concept they treat every woman as the patient just not the patient and they want to do everything as a rush because they need beds because if a mother is laboring and it is going on and on you know it is taking up their time and it means that they are having less money so it is you know 
what I'm trying to tell you. This is all it is about. And I'm sorry if you feel if you feel that this is the reality, but this is how it is. It is all about money. It revolves around money. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. So over here, we encourage careful observance of experience working professionals rather than interference all the time. And it is an empowering, natural, non-medicated birth with the woman that is you as a mother at the center of event, that is, which means that everything revolves around you. You will be the decision maker and you will know how to birth. You will not have to be rely on others. And the birth attendants or the care providers, that is a staff or your obstetrician, they will be supporting and encouraging you along the way. So this is what it is all about. And slowly, like gradually, we'll see the principles it has, and then we'll move on to the next topic that is supporting mother during labor and birth. So there are like there are 15 principles. The first one is that Allah is in control of all things. So that is obvious. So I needn't say about it, but I just have to remind you, unfortunately, we start believing that everything is in the hands of others but just because we don't know. No, you know, it is your responsibility. The second is that birth is a natural life event. So it is not something like hula who and you have to be admitted into the hospital. No, it is not like that. If you know, and if you read, and if you have studied about the history of birthing culture, you will know that women before us, that is our grandmothers or great-great-grandmothers, they knew what birth was because they grew up watching and looking at their farm animals giving birth. Even the males, they knew how it works. They knew how the animals give birth. We human, you know, we also are, are, are mammals. We come under the category of mammals. But unfortunately, today, that knowledge, the chain of knowledge has lost. Today, unfortunately, most of the women, not most, I can say almost all of us, all of us see and experience birth for the first time. And it is very sad, I feel very sad to say that this first time is not what it is supposed to be. Because we don't know what we are going into. And we are not educated about it. You know, even though we are Muslims, we should be worried about how our Ummah is progressing. The Prophet he, he prayed for the one who thinks about the Ummah and he tries to have children. We are not worried about all of that. You know, we have forgotten to trust our creator. Anyways, getting back, the third one, birth is inherently safe. Yes, it is safe. No, it is not an emergency. No, it is not a position wherein you need intervention all the time. It is safe. It is safe because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed your body that way. Yes, you may need help sometimes during emergency, but that doesn't mean, you know, it is required all the time. The fourth one is the mother's role in maximizing birth safeguards. Now, you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built in some safety nets in our bodies. I'll give you one example. One of the examples that Sister Aisha says and conveys in her book is that you're, when you get pregnant, your blood volume increases by 50%, like you have 50% extra blood running inside your body to be a baby, okay, because you are doing a very good and great job. So when you have this blood volume, it is required for you. It is your safety net because later on when you give birth, there is a lot of blood loss. So there is a balance. Are you getting my point? There is a balance. The blood increases when it is needed to be. And it is not there. It is expelled when there is no need. So this is not something you should be worried about. You should know how to support this procedure. You should know how to support this normal process. 
So that was one of the examples of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made some safety nets and the blood volume, increase in blood volume is one of them. Trust in birth is trust in Allah. So like if, like any act which you do it with sincere intention and following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, then you know when you do it as an intention of worship, then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. Similarly, labor, it reminds you of Allah. It reminds you of how weak you are. It reminds you of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how dependent you are on Him. You have to keep asking Him because everything is in control and everything is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next principle is physiology. That is, you will be taught about what is there what happens during pregnancy, what is there in your body, how your body systems work during pregnancy, during labor, and what to do when something goes wrong. Next, the physical preparation for labor, then importance of good nutrition, and you will also be taught about natural techniques for labor pain. Importance of avoiding drugs in pregnancy and labor. This is very important because if you know that most of the drugs that you have during pregnancy and labor, apart from being unnecessary, they are very dangerous for you and your baby. Unless you know what actually you are putting inside you. And it takes only like 60 seconds to one minute to reach it to your baby. Do you know that? Any drug, even the normal painkiller, Panadol or something, whatever you take, it reaches the baby very very fast and quickly so who knows that you know because most of the drugs that are used do not have the guarantee that they are safe it is not proven safe it is just a confusion and vague classification but there's no guarantee that it is proven safe and you will learn more about these in the classes the next is parental responsibility starts in pregnancy. Oh, yes, it is a great responsibility for you as a mother and your partner as a father because you are parents. It starts from when you choose your spouse for marriage. Do you know that? You select the father or the mother for your children when you get married. So if you don't know, what to do and how to take care of your children before onwards what will you do afterwards and how will you take care of them until they know to stand up for themselves what will you do when something wrong is being done to your child and you're just standing over there and then later on you are going to be accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that why didn't you take any step why didn't you take any stance why didn't you protect your child don't you think you'll be questioned yes you will Next is birth consumerism is an obligation of good parenting. One of the things of good parenting is that you should be a good consumer. Who's a consumer? A customer or a consumer is somebody who pays and you know buys a thing which has quality product and which has benefits to you, right? Similarly, birth is a very, you know, as I said, it's a multi-billion dollar industry now. There is a reason why there are medicines there's a reason why they are doctors there's a reason why you have to pay to them there is a reason for everything unless you want to know what it is all about so when you have to be a good consumer you what when you have to be a good consumer you will have to know what are the other options available and what you can buy for a good price and have the worth of the product similarly even for your delivery or birth there's a reason i'm not using the word delivery i'll explain to you later so for the birth it is you know an obligation for you to go and shop around for your doctors to go and shop around for your care providers be it your doula or midwife or childbirth educator anybody because it is your birth simply and you are paying to get the services they are not gods unfortunately most of them most of us believe this way so you have to go and shop around for them so that you get the best service and you get the one which are in terms and in tune with your intentions and plans 
Now, when I told that I don't use the word delivery because you are not delivering your child in natural birth, you are birthing your baby. Delivery is a weak term wherein you are being, you know, your body is under control of somebody else and they deliver your child. No, a real woman is the one who knows how to birth the child by gaining control of her body and her fertility. But that doesn't mean the other one is less woman. No, it simply means that every woman needs to be informed and make informed decisions and choices, knowing about the consequences of each decision that she is taking. The next principle is self advocacy. Oh, yes, you should know how to stand up for yourself, for your baby, for your husband, or for anybody in that place, especially during pregnancy and birth, because you don't know you might be lied to and might be done a lot of things which are not supposed to be in the first place. There are a lot of examples. For example, IV, IV line, which is given to you. You know, any of the nurses and doctors can put anything in that damn thing and you will not even know what is running in your veins when it is not even required at the first place. Do you know that? There are a lot of things which you will discover. So it is very important for you to know and to stand up for yourself. You should know how to tell them and what to tell them for what you want to achieve. The next is birth experience matters for a lifetime. Yes, for a woman, birth is something, be it regardless of how many children she has, or even if she has a loss of child, every birth, you sit and talk to any woman, how was the experience of your n number of child or children, and she will tell you. Yes, she will. She will be able to tell you every little detail of what happened that day. Who told what that day? Yes, she will. I'm not joking. Even you know that. Even you know that you are able to recollect and recall. And based on that, and based on what you went through, based on the experiences of each birth, is who you are today. Now, let me explain it to you clearly. Birth is a process of transfer of control. Okay? So, when you know that the control is in your hands, you are being empowered. So when a woman experiences birth in the way it is supposed to be, she feels empowered. And when she starts feeling empowered in her during her birth, she starts feeling empowered in all the other aspects of her life. And then she will be who she is. So that comes us to the next principle that is empowering women in birth. And it leaves a lasting impression on you. It defines who you are, what kind of mother you are, what kind of woman you are. How, you know, how much you stand up for yourself and for your children when the need arises. It defines all of it. The next is educating partners to support mothers in labor. We focus on the partners as well. And most of us, we encourage couple classes because it is your partner's responsibility also to be present and to know what is happening to your body when at the first place they are themselves who are responsible for it. Right? And partners also include whoever you consider as your birth partner, be it your mother, or your mother-in-law, or your sister, or your husband, whoever it is. We encourage that the mothers bring their partners to us to our classes. Next is breastfeeding and the best nutrition for the baby. But that doesn't mean that we tell the mothers that if it's not working, throw away the bottles. We give them the information of how beneficial breastfeeding is and how natural it is for the mother to go for it. And we tell them the disadvantages of bottle feeding. We help the mother with baby latching and we do a lot of stuff so that the mother knows what is best for the baby. Thanking Allah for the birth experience. Yes, 
and we teach mothers to be grateful. It is important for you to be grateful because if you're not grateful, Allah SWT will snatch away everything that you have that you should be thankful for. And if you are grateful, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is going to bless you with so many more things that you can thank Allah for, and then you will get more things. So that is how the circle is. And the last one is trust in Allah's plan for our birth and life. So you should learn to trust Allah in your life in general and for birth in every way. So this is the Amani Birth Book by Sister Aisha. And if you are someone who would want to know more about what Amani Birth talks and is about, then you can purchase that book and read it and then further enroll yourself for the classes. Because obviously what you learn live and what we teach you in person is you know, incomparable to anything else. You can order online and it should be available. The next is a CD and it talks about, it has a com compilation of the surahs that can be, you know, heard on during pregnancy and labor. So, prepare for a blessed start in life. And may Allah bless you with healthy, righteous children that reach maturity of years and may you be granted their righteousness. Now, let's move on to the next topic that all of you voted for. It was support during labor and birth. Now, there are a lot of things that I would like to share with you, but the time is limited. And, uh, you know, it also depends on what kind of audience I have and what they need to know and what they, you know, they can come and learn in the classes. So if at all you did not get anything, you are, free, you are free to drop a comment below so that I can see and understand later once I'm done with the, with the topics in the question answer session. So how should a laboring or working mother be supported? Now there is this word called birth team. Birth team comprises of three important components. First is your birth partner, your doula, and third are the witnesses. Now, your birth partner may be your mother or your mother-in-law or anybody else who will be by your side during labor and birth. The next is doula. You must have heard or must have been aware of who she is or what she is, or I can draw this up in next live session, inshallah. So basically a doula is a, you can, doula comes from the word which means slave. So doula is basically a slave of a pregnant lady. Or you can tell that she is the best friend of a pregnant lady who treated who treats her uh, the pregnant mother as an individual and is all by her side physically emotionally and mentally she is a doula you know, she's not a medical care provider but if you know for your information doulas have known to reduce c-section rates by 20 to 50 percent by 20 to 50 percent so if you hire one of the doulas and if she supports you throughout your labor and your birth then it is most likely unless you have any very serious complication that you will and if you are low risk you will give birth normally so that is a doula she explains to you educates you and tells you how to take a decision and reminds you of your choices at the time of birth then the third one is witnesses witnesses include all the medical care providers be it your doctor or your midwife or the nurses the staff whoever it is whoever is around you during your birth 
So our team consists of these three people. All right. And the most important thing that it consists of is you. Because it is your birth. It is all about you. It is all about you and you and you. Nobody else is going to take decisions for you. Now, coming back to the support that you can get. The support can be divided into three categories. First is physical, next is emotional, and third is mental. Now, the reason why I'm telling you if you are pregnant rather than educating your birth partner is that when you come to know what kind of support you need, the next time you'll bring your birth partner, <laughs> right? If you don't know what kind of support you need to get the kind of birth you want, you will not convey to your birth partner, right? So, the physical, physical support. The first one is ambience or atmosphere or your environment where you're birthing. It has a very big role to play in your birth. Now, if you observe how animals give birth, they seclude themselves and isolate themselves and go into privacy mode, DND mode, do not disturb me mode. And they snap at you if you go and disturb them. And if you go and interrupt them, the labor prolongs. Do you know that? If you are somebody who has seen domestic or farm animals giving birth, you will know how important it is for a laboring mother to be in the privacy of her own and in be in her own space, and the privacy of her own home or her birth nest, wherever it is. And usually they prefer dim lights. We humans, it is our instinctual need to give birth this way. Because that is what relaxes us. And that is what helps to stimulate the kind of hormones we need to give birth. Bright lights, people coming in and going, disturbing you, putting gadgets on you, devices on you, hooking up you to IV and doing things to you which you don't even know what is being done to you. No, it prolongs your labor. Yes, it does. It scares you away. Why? Because it is not your instinctual need. Your body is not designed to deal in that way. The reason is your hormones. Your flight and fright hormones. It switches on if you get scared. And it interferes in your labor. And you will learn in detail about this in the classes. So the first one is ambience. The next is dates and water or anything that is easily, easily digestible and which helps you. I may rush a little bit because we are, you know, I don't want to, you know, uh, make you wait for a long time. So whatever is left, we can cover next time after Ramadan. So let's see, inshallah. So dates and water. It, uh, dates have a lot of benefits if you have dates. It helps you in your labor. It helps you to shorten the labor. It helps with the uterus stone, with the contractions, and with your bowel movements. And it, ha it has a lot of nutrients. So mothers are usually encouraged to have nibble, nibble on dates. In the hospitals, if you are not, you know, if, if you are a very low risk pregnant mother, then it is advisable for you to have some dates in your backs and just nibble on them and water to try to have water and stay yourself hydrated. Next is babysitting that is, you can leave your children or your toddler somewhere else so that you're, you have your peace of mind. And then the positions. Lying on your back is called the lithotomy or supine position. No, it is not an ideal position for birthing. It leads to a lot of stitches and it works against gravity. The simple example is when you take a ketchup bottle and if you want to 
pour ketchup or whatever sauce it is do you do you place the water on the table and expect it to come out on its own no you lift the bottle upside down and you press against it right that is how birth works it works with the gravity and all you have to do is support the process not be against it so you will learn a lot of labor positions that are beneficial to you and how to negotiate with the hospital protocols and get the kind of care providers that you need the last one is staff it is important to have a good coordinating staff if you choose bad and stupid people then you are going to have a horrible experience if you have already discussed your plan which is called the birth plan or your options how you want to give birth and what you want during birth with your staff already then that is best for you stupid people and foolish things it will spoil the entire experience the next is emotional support emotional support depends on the kind of emotional needs a mother has with respect to each stage of labor labor is divided into three stages if you know already or if you don't know labor is divided into three stages latent first stage or active stage and the transitions the last stage and then we have the pushing stage where the baby comes out and the third stage is where the placenta is expelled so it is first second and third stage first stage is again divided into three you can get this information on internet it's very easily available but the most important thing to know and which is not easily available is that the emotional needs of a mother differ during labor differ with respect to the stage she is in the first stage if she is in active labor she has different emotional needs she's usually active and in aware of what is happening to her body in second stage she is in a switch off mode so it your emotional support your birth partner what the best that it can support you is to know how a mother in general will react in different stages of labor and give the same emotional leads encouraging her loving her telling her that she can do it your partner should tell you you can do it where are the glee where are the keys can i have a glass of water did you pack your bag no no that is not what they should be doing to you is the pain coming is the pain gone are you doing this are you doing that no no, 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 they should they are supposed to leave you alone. <laughs> and they will know that when they get educated. They should be calm and receptive. They should be strong and responsible. And they should be advocates of you and your birth plan. And they should be the ones to identify the triggers. Some women, um, if you are some of those, I feel sorry for you. And I hope and pray to Allah to heal you with your past trauma. Some women experience childhood abuse or some kind of trauma and usually since they are most vulnerable during labor it triggers and that is what comes in the way of labor and the labor halts your fears they halt the labor so your support partner should be aware about you you it cannot be anybody you know auntie or your anybody the people you want in the birth environment should be the ones know you and you are comfortable with them if there is some auntie or some you know you know if you are not comfortable with them, then you should object to it it is your hurt they have no role to play because your body will not do the job what it is supposed to do and you will learn this you will learn this in the classes mental mental support is relaxation and massage the kind of support and environment that you want will is usually what makes you relax so know what makes you relax is it the quran is it water is it deep breathing whatever it is so you should have that so that your oxytocin or love hormones are released and your body does the job what it is supposed to do contractions are easy pain is easy to manage and you give birth quickly without having to somebody touch you put fingers in you manipulate you and do nonsense 
Third is identifying mental state stage wise. Now, this is also important. Just like emotional needs, the mental needs are also different. During the second stage, usually the woman is in a big confusion and she needs to be reminded that she can do it and she is almost there. Okay? So, you will all be taught about this. The next is privacy. She needs privacy. If there's a auntie who wants, who you are not comfortable to show your privacy to her in the labor ward, you should make sure she's kicked out. And if there's somebody who's taunting you or commenting you, or you know, no, she's not supposed to be there at first place if you don't want her to be. That is what we teach. We teach questioning. We teach advocacy. We teach this so that you get what you need. And these, is, and these are your inherent needs. It is not a luxury. Because if there is a balance over here, there will be balance with your babies, the way you deal with them. Less stress, relaxed way. You will be able to ter do therapy of your children the way it is supposed to be done. If everything starts with trauma and unnecessary interference, then expect the same later on and all your life. Unfortunately, and I'm sorry to tell you the truth, this is how it is. If you don't know how to stand up for yourself from the start, you should have to be complacent all your life and be a doormat. And I'm really sorry for you if you are that way. So it's time that you wake up and start thinking what to do. The next is the neocortex part. Neocortex is a part of the brain that functions. And it gives you the thoughtful thing. When it switches on, the instinctive mode of the brain switches off. Okay. So during labor, it should be off. Your husband cannot come to you and ask you while you are having contraction and you are going, ah, and your husband is coming and asking, ah, where are the kids we taught? No. He should be taught about this. He cannot do this to you because it will interrupt your instinctual and primitive mode of the brain and then it will spoil the process and have, you know, do some mess with the contractions and labor that is happening. So that was all about the support the mother wants during labor. Now, the next topic, which was supposed to be discussed, was about the role of husbands during labor and support. I made it a little short because I don't want you guys to go to your husbands and then tell, see, this is what you're supposed to do. And then you end up fighting and arguing and the marriage is as well because of me. No, I don't want that. So I will try to give minimum information. And this information is for you. Okay, how to involve him. And once you have involved him, you can bring them to the childbirth classes and we will be happy to deal with them. <laughs> so obviously, I wouldn't want that marriages are breaking because of this. Your husbands. Husbands in our society, unfortunately, are poor beings who are left confused of what to do, where to support, where not to stand up, because it's all the politics around. And especially in India, there's a womenly, you know, uh, in our community, especially in Hyderabad, I remember the doctors uh, frowning on when I insisted that I wanted my husband to be with me even during the appointments. Because that is how the culture is over there, and that is very bad because it is very easy for them to manipulate you if they know that they can get their way through you by emotionally bullying you. Because the husbands, mashallah, may Allah bless them, they have rational brain, they do not go most on emotions, they think rationally because they are men and they are wired that way. It is important for their presence now, usually. I can go on and tell about how important it is for them to be present, but I will not tell this to you because I wouldn't want you to go and then, you know, bash them. I'll tell them directly <laughs> when you get them to me. Right now, for you, I'll explain to you why most of them are absent. I do not want to play a role or don't play a role. The first one is culture and the second is lack of education. Now. When the chain of knowledge is lost of how to birth, similarly, when the medical field dominates, 
and when they, when they see that husbands are creating a lot of problems because they are thinking rationally and they are standing for their wives, they want to kick them out and they want to do a lot of politics. So gradually it becomes a norm and it becomes acceptable and then it becomes women dominating stuff. So you, that first is culture. Usually the East and South Asian side, starting from the Gulf countries and even India or Pakistan, Unfortunately, most of the things are that way. They are not supposed to be because it is the husband's responsibility to, to know what is happening to the wife and the baby. He is the qawam, he is the protector. Right? The next reason why husbands are not there is lack of education. It can be secular education about pregnancy and birth, and he may not be aware of why it is important for him to be there. And the other one is a religious region. He may not realize his importance and his role so first thing you can do is get him involved you can download apps and in his phone and put notifications so that he gets weekly reminders and he knows what is happening with your body you can enroll him to childbirth classes along with yourself and both of you can read books good books on natural birth and pregnancy you can have a money birth as well there are other very great books that involve husbands such as Husband Coached Childbirth by Dr. Bradley. Then you both of you can watch videos together of birthing videos where there are fathers involved in the birth. The next is that you should tell them that they are protectors and they have a great accountability and responsibility for anything that happens to you and the baby. He will be questioned. He will be questioned. If he had the capability to come and protect you and your baby, but he did not come forward, then he will be questioned and he will be held accountable because he is your protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that men are qawam of women. They have a role to play. They have a very important role to play. This starts, this tells you how to give tarbiyah to your children. The third is active participant. Now you should encourage him how he can be an active participant and what effect his role can have because if he is there there will be less of bullying you know usually when there are husbands the doctors are like they don't show much authority because they know that you have got a backup and if she does something to you in front of him you are gone seriously this is the truth and if he's not there then she knows that you know you are an easy prey. You are a great victim for her. You are a great prey for her. Not all doctors are like this, by the way. And unfortunately, most of them are like this. So it is very important for him to be there and for him to be there with you for the shopping around of the your care provider, be it your hospital or your doctor. The most best doctors are the ones that encourage your partner's presence because they want birth to be a family event, a normal event not where something they are afraid of being exposed to okay so there will be less bullying less manipulation exploitation and you can tell them that you know at the end of the day daddy knows best because he's the leader he's the head of the family so i think that is all for today and we have covered like what all you guys wanted to hear and discuss so right now I would want you to, if you have any questions or answers, I will give you next like five minutes. It's 827 now, so I'll wait for a couple of five minutes or through to three minutes and see if you have any questions regarding whatever we discussed today so that I can assist you and then inshallah we can end the session. Even after the session, if you have questions, please continue to comment and continue with this thread. And even after session, if you have any session related question, because I will not be deleting this live session video, I intend to keep this in the group for education purposes for public interest. So if you are somebody who are listening to this as a, rec a live recorded, which is kept in the group, then please feel free to tag my name, Facebook name, Zahra Bint Zaki, and drop the comment. So I'm open to questions right now. Please feel free to comment. Till then, I will be guiding you to my and Amani Bird's profile. 
This is the money birth page. Amanibirth.com. You can go here, check out the products, and brief yourself about what it is. This is my blog. Zehra bin Tizaki, wordpress.com. You can read my birth story over here on my blog. My birth story. We back the second one. And the last is about dot me page. This is my about dot me page. Okay, so you can follow and connect to me on any of the social media profiles. I likely mostly I'm on Facebook. Yes, questions please keep coming. Uh, Okay. Need to ask about induction. The question is by Sister Fatima Khan. I think she's the admin. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, need to ask about induction and how does it affect on the baby? Okay. So there are a lot of things actually. Um, okay, let me um, begin by this, that there are various types of inductions, okay? First of all, it depends on what kind of induction procedure is used. Like there's this balloon procedure, and then there's softening gel, and then, you know, um, there is a membrane sweep, and there are pitocin like uh, synthetic oxytocin or mosquitocin or syntocin so there are two ways of inducing labor first is medical and the second one is natural the best way to induce labor is naturally you can you know uh, you can either take childbirth classes for that or you can go to baby center or some very good websites on internet and read about how to activate labor naturally there are no side effects and that is the best method some of the things are acupressure massages uh, dates eating dates from 36 weeks and then um, the things that activate normal labor naturally is nipple stimulation lots of intercourse because your partner is thing the uh the semen it has uh softening um this thing capacity which helps to soften your cervix so if you do that you know the your cervix gets soft and ripe very quickly and you will be able to go into labor soon acupressure massage is also very important you can google acupressure points and some other exercises such as squats if you do not have any medical condition or pain such as pubic pain or something you can look up for these things now coming on to the medical intervention it depends on what kind of uh, medical induction you have had okay so for example if um, it is membrane sweep. Membrane sweep is usually like there's nothing bad about it much, but uh, yes, it does cause irregular contractions. Okay, so that is there. Then the other methods are like the gel which they use. It it is also you know it doesn't have a lot of side effects. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't and uh, the most uh, dangerous thing is the artificial um, oxytocin uh, drip that is pitocin or syntocin now the natural birth proponents uh, describe a term called as cascading interventions okay they use this to describe how especially uh, medical induction, especially specifically the pitocin or syntocin drip, causes a complete loop wherein it leads to another intervention, another intervention, and then it leads to C-section rates. So it is associated with a lot of C-section rates. If you are interested, I'll tell you in brief. Now, what happens when you're given artificial pitocin? Usually, when you are in labor, your body works 
with itself. It gives oxytocin. It uh, the brain bar stimulates oxytocin, and then the, the receptors in the uterus they receive the hormone, and then they do their job. But when artificial hormone like hormones are given, synthetic hormones, what happens is the receptors lose their job. Okay, and they get confused because they are not getting signal from the brain. They are getting artificial stuff. And they begin to give hard labor. So you get contractions and contractions. Normal labor is not as hard as the one which is by the artificial syntocin or pitocin. Okay, please know this. There's no benefit if you push the mother before 42 weeks. 42 weeks is the any baby which goes beyond the due date is perfectly normal unless there are any complications arising there's no need for your doctor to push you before 42 weeks to into an uh, induction i don't know why they do it most probably it is for money okay so that is the thing. Now your receptor, receptors get weakened and then you need pain medication. So they want to give you epidural. And when they give you epidural, your body gets numb. When your body gets numb, what happens is you cannot move. You cannot feel the baby. You cannot push the baby. So they need to cut you and they need to cut you from down. And the baby is not coming. They help you, assist you. Sometimes when uh, they ask you if you are feeling it, you cannot push it down. They tell you fetal distress the baby cannot take all of this artificial stuff and the baby has drop in heart rate and then they take you to for emergency c-section so this is what it leads to and any other questions does contractions caused by induction are far more painful than artery yes yes the contractions caused by induction are more painful than the natural ones yes because as i told you they do not the receptors get confused there are receptors in the uterus hormone receptors when you give synthetic hormone they begin to give hard ones now what happens is it leads to postpartum hemorrhage as well because when you're not getting the message from the brain properly and you're getting the artificial stuff so your brain will not do the work when it needs to be done your need, uterus needs to be contracted after you give birth so that there is less blood loss, okay? So when your brain is not doing the job because of this artificial stuff, what happens is you it may even lead to PPH and the pain, the labor is very hard. It is very hard. Some important tips to release oxytocin hormone. Oxytocin hormone is called love hormone. So anything that makes you feel loved is what helps you to release this hormone. Be it, you know, going into the relaxation mode, talking to your mom, uh, talk, caressing your other toddler, your baby, spending time with your husband, and, uh, uh, you know, having lots of intercourse, nipple stimulation, and anything and everything that makes you relax. Quran. Okay, anything that makes your oxytocin hormone dominant and not uh, let your uh, this flight or fight hormone dominant. Okay, so anything that does you and that helps you to release that oxytocin hormone will help you. Okay, so remember this. Oxytocin is a love hormone. You can find it on the internet. It will be easily available. Like what makes you release those hormones? What are the things? A simple hug, talk with your mother, spending time with your husband. And, you know, all of these things will help you, inshallah. The more relaxed you are, the more easier it is for you. Yes, same happened with me. Induction led to fetal heart. I'm so sorry for you, sister or mama. And I pray to Allah that you have a very good birth experience. And you know, may Allah give you the ideal birth and the kind of birth that you are dreaming of. Inshallah ta'ala. Any more questions? I will look for another one or two minutes. Inshallah ta'ala. Like I think I covered four questions, right? Any more two more two to three questions are welcomed. 
any more questions? Anything related that you need to ask about the topics that we discussed today? Anything about a money world or anything about labor support? Or the support that you can get from your husband? Anything at all? One thing I will tell to mothers that are watching is to practice deep breathing exercises. Okay? There are two kinds of breathing. One is chest and one is abdominal breathing. Chest breathing is very like bad for you. If you see the instinctual one, if you see some normal babies and toddlers, the ones they do is abdominal breathing. So you can Google that. Inshallah, you'll get the information and try, even if you watch some videos, try to practice that and try to make use of that during your labor, inshallah. This will help you with managing pain. A lot. So, okay, I'll wait for one more, one or two minutes more. It's 8.39 and my laptop right now, so I'll wait for like 8.40, 41 or 42. You can do exercises. So, yes, okay, then it was a very um, nice experience. It was a pleasure having you all. Please uh, feel free to share this video or you can add them to this group. I'm promoting this group also. <laughs> the admins should be thankful to me. You can, you know, add the sisters over here and let them watch it. Um, I don't intend to delete this because it has a lot of beneficial information. And if you are somebody who is residing in Al Khobar, Saudi Arabia, then please feel free to know that I'm available for childbirth education classes and doula services. And yes, I'm also ready to negotiate based on the prices. My sole intention is to create awareness among our community because I see there are a lot of, you know, there are very less sisters involved in this. It is a necessity and emergency situation in our ummah right now. So if you are somebody who is in Al Khobar and who's looking for a childbirth educator or doula, please feel free to contact me. I will, I'll be available mostly and usually on Facebook. So I'm very active over there. Apart from that, uh, you can connect to me through about.me. This is the um, about.me page, Zahra92. And this is my blog. And um, and you can, if you if, even if you go on Facebook, you can find all my social media links. So that is all for today. Um, Ramzan Mubarak, <laughs> so late, late, but not too late. And uh, may Allah bless you and may Allah help you to make the most of this. Try to pray as much as you can to, to get the kind of birth you want, inshallah ta'ala. And if you are somebody who's listening to this recorded video and if you have benefited, please feel free to drop the comment, questions as comment and tag me over here. You can get connected to me anytime, inshallah. And if you guys want more live sessions, please let me know, tag me in the post in this group and let me know on what to talk about, okay? I would encourage you to come and join childbirth education classes because the information that you get to know is very different from that I can convey online. All right. So take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.